Hello everyone and welcome. On our top 5 Zelda Twilight Princess theories video, a lot of you posted in the comments that you wanted us to go more in depth on the Twilight Princess Link being a descendant of Ocarina of Time Link and Malin. This theory requires us to just assume Malin and Link did have a family together, which, let's be honest, is what all of the evidence suggests. This theory adds another layer to that. Yes, Gerudo King Link does seem odd, but as insane as it is, the theory does have actual evidence to back it up. So to explain the first part, here is the Geek Apprentice, and if you have any Zelda theories or games that you would like us to cover, comment below and let us know, as well as giving your thoughts on this theory. We 100% know that the Link in Twilight Princess is a direct descendant of Link from Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Not only does the game itself tell us this, but the creators of the game, including Aonuma, have stated this multiple times in interviews. So, as a bonus, this automatically debunks the Link is dead in Majora's Mask theory. If Link was dead, the Link in Twilight Princess would never have been born. Case closed. This brings up a question, though. If the Hero of Time is the great, great something grandfather of the Hero of Twilight, who did the Hero of Time end up marrying when he returned from Termina and grew up? Well, we have three main love interest possibilities. Number one is Princess Zelda. Number two is Malin. Number three, Princess Rudo. These were really the only three that showed interest in Link, I suppose. Since Link and Twilight Princess isn't half fish living in Zora's domain, that takes out Ruto. We also do not start Twilight Princess with Prince Link living in Hyrule Castle. In fact, Link has never been to Hyrule, let alone seen the castle. So this rules out Princess Zelda, leaving Malin. Here's some evidence to back this up. Malin did seem interested in Link. She loved that Epona was fond of him. Her father even jokes about them getting married. Link and Twilight Princess does grow up in the same area as Link and Ocarina of Time, a tree in a forested area. However, just like Milan, Link grows up working on the farm. Not only does he still have a horse named Epona, and yes, we can change your name, but canon it's Epona, just as we can change the name of Link, but he's still canonically named Link. Finally, Link just happens to know Epona's song, which would have had to have been passed down from the Hero of Time or Malin. Some people may not like this choice, but honestly, out of every single character in Ocarina of Time, Malin is the only option that has strong evidence to support her being who Link came back and married. Now, the second part. If you speak to Malin's father, he will say various things depending on the masks you wear. If you wear the Gerudo mask or Goron mask, he will say you look just like Malin's mother. Yes, Talon does say on second thought, Link looks nothing like her. However, some fans think this is said after he realizes that Link is just wearing a mask. While the Gerudo mask does make sense, the Goron mask doesn't. Or the Goron mask is just a joke. We actually never see Malin's mother. However, if we compare Malin to the Gerudo, while she doesn't have a tan, she is one of the only characters with red hair in the entire game who isn't an adult Gerudo. She also has blue eyes like some of the Gerudo, but that is a more common feature. The lack of a tan can also very easily be explained. We are told the Gerudo will travel to Hyrule in order to find a husband, which oddly enough implies that over time, with no male Gerudo being born except every 100 years and the Gerudo having to marry Hylians, or at least have a family with them, depending on how the bloodline and genes of Gerudo changes between each generation. Every generation of Gerudo born actually only has half of the Gerudo genes as the previous generation, which means over time they would have very little Gerudo blood in them. As an example, if we begin with a 100% Gerudo, her daughter would be half Gerudo and half Hylian. That same Gerudo's granddaughter would be only 25% Gerudo and 75% Hylian. After only two generations, the Gerudo race would already be three times more Hylian than they are Gerudo, which implies several different thoughts. How does this work? So Malin's mother, why would she be missing? Well, we do know there was a big war before Ocarina of Time, which is the reason Link presumably also lost his parents. We know this is at least true for his mother. To speculate a bit more, she could still be in Gerudo Village, but has let Malin live in Hyrule, either because she was born looking more Hylian, so she stayed with the Hylian side of her family, or, as we know from various games, we are told the Gerudo Filthy Desert was more of a harsh prison. 
Plus, with Malin not living in the desert with the intense sunlight, she wouldn't tan as much, presumably. So if Malin is in fact half or part Gerudo, and Link from Ocarina of Time does in fact marry her, as the game heavily suggests, this would mean Link and Twilight Princess being their descendant would also be part Gerudo. This could possibly imply that Link and Twilight Princess also has a chance of being the rare male Gerudo king that is born every 100 years, as we see no other Gerudo at all except Ganondorf, though he is confirmed to be the same Ganondorf born before Ocarina of Time, which was well over 100 years ago. Yes, Gerudo King Link does seem odd, but as insane as it is, the theory does have actual evidence to back it up. I personally don't 100% believe it, but it is one that I had fun coming up with. Like I said, it is a big twist on the Link and Malin theory, and takes it a step further. I also like to think actually ends up marrying Princess Zelda, technically, unknowingly, uniting both the bloodline of the king and ruler of the Gerudo, and queen and ruler of the Hylians. It also satisfies the Z-Link shippers in a way that is unique to only Twilight Princess. What do you all think of this? Let us know in the comments below, and have an amazing day. Thank you everyone who watched this video all the way through, and a special thank you to all of the Patreon supporters whose names are on screen right now. Now give away winner time. Remember, we will still be giving away $60 eShop cards when we reach 97,000, 98,000, 99,000 subscribers, and the big Nintendo Switch, Skyward Sword, and Joy-Con, or a $200 eShop card giveaway for reaching 100,000 subscribers. Don't think that's it though. We have two or three other giveaways right now. We gave away the first bonus eShop card to the live chat on the last Hylian Gamescast episode. We will be giving away another bonus eShop card on the next episode of the Hylian Gamescast for those who are subscribed or a member of our Discord. After we reach 100,000 subscribers, we won't be ending the giveaways. Instead of $60, we will be giving away $100 eShop cards for every 10,000 new subscribers. And we are thinking about doing $50 eShop cards for every 5,000 subscribers. So for example, we would give away $50 at 105,000 subscribers, $100 at 110,000 subscribers, $50 again at 115,000 subscribers, and repeating, with bigger giveaways for reaching special milestones, like 125,000 or 150,000 subscribers. Maybe more Nintendo Switches or whatever new consoles Nintendo has at the time. Or to make it easier for everyone, just sending the money through PayPal to be used on whatever you would like. With all of that out of the way, the winner of the $60 eShop card for us reaching the 96,000 subscribers goal is linked shipped, which almost made me say a bad word, who says, best Zelda channel ever. I fall asleep to your videos. Well, thank you. We actually hear that quite a bit, that people enjoy listening to our different voices and even fall asleep listening to our Zelda theories, top 10 videos, or other playlists, especially our Zelda podcast, the Hylian Gamescast. We also had a bonus winner on the last Hylian Gamescast episode, selected from the live chat by Daniel Jorge. And no, despite the last winner and the new winner both leaving really positive comments, that is not why they were picked at all. I use a program that picks at random. It's just you are all so amazing, and so many of you just happen to leave so many positive comments. It would be rare if we picked one that wasn't positive, which we got a lot of even before we started this big giveaway. So again, thank you all for being so amazing and awesome. Have a great day.